So tonight was an American President moment. Now see, I love this really cheesy movie called An American President. It's one of my favorite romantic movies of all time. And it has Michael Douglas and Annette Bening. And Michael Douglas was the president. Uh, and all through the movie, the president's being attacked and picked on, and we really, really, truly want him to just stand up and say something. But of course, he doesn't. Then, at the end, in he walks. There he goes to the podium, and he makes a speech that, like, no other politician would because it's honest and truthful. Well, tonight, Barack Obama uh, made history in several accounts, but uh, it's funny because all day long all the pundits could talk about was the fact that where he was doing this looked like some sort of Roman Colosseum and the Temple of Obama, and it's like, you know, Russia has moved warships into Georgia, and so have we, and this is all you can talk about today, but whatever. Okay, so... Uh, he did make history, 75,000 people at Mile High Stadium, better known as Invesco Field. Thank God that Barack Obama didn't call it that. Uh, <laughs> the Pepsi Stadium, Invesco Field. Here we have the Pepsi Democrats. Uh, whatever. So he made history, which is kind of sad because it means that in 238 years, we haven't had the sense to allow African Americans to be president, or at least to credibly run for president. So well, it's a history and a long time coming, but history and a long time coming is still history nonetheless. And he made it tonight. And it was an enormously big speech. What was going to happen? Was he going to walk out on stage and bomb? Here we had 75,000 people. 75,000 people. No Democrat has opened it up like this before. Whoa, whoa, and you should have heard Wolf Blitzer today. Hello, I am Wolf Blitzer. <laughs> We are wondering why they packed them up and moved them here to the Invesco Field. Wolf always said Invesco Field, by the way. Barack Mile High Stadium. Wolf Invesco Field. Uh, shows you who owns whom, Rupert Murdoch. Uh, anyway, so, you know, Wolf was like, it's abnormal. This is not, you know, it's abnormal to let actual voters come and see their president-elect, the person who might run their country. Yes, heaven forbid we should let real people in to hear the president. So, of course, the Democrats are getting flack because they created a spectacle, and why not? It is the presidency, after all. I mean, hello, if we can have the Academy Awards to give someone a statue that they're going to use as a doorstop, how about, you know, something hoop all over the president? They're just mad because what can John McCain do, that poor animatronic thing? What's he going to do? My God. So out walks Barack Obama tonight. There's music. All the, there's all this stuff. None of the bad karaoke singers from the other three nights. No, tonight they had Stevie Wonder and Sheryl Crow and all these fabulous people. So out walked Barack. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm already going to vote for him. So what's it matter, right? I mean, what's it matter? I'm already going to vote for him. Now, I want to vote for him. Because Barack Obama inspired people tonight. Did he inspire me? Well, he made me cry. Uh, is that inspiration? Or just loose tear ducts? Or maybe I'm off my meds? I don't know. But he made me cry. And I thought to myself, you know, they're already attacking him right after the speech, which was a brilliant speech, almost as good as Hillary's. <laughs> uh, it was a brilliant speech. He's a brilliant orator. And it's not lost on the 45th anniversary of the I Have a Dream speech. And that pressure was on him. You know, tonight, Martin Luther King Jr. made one of the most famous speeches of all time. I have a dream. And now, the first credible African-American candidate for president has to go out and make a speech. <laughs> Honey, that's pressure. Uh, and he delivered. And afterwards, a lot of people were calling into C-SPAN saying, Oh, it's just words. It's a lot of words. It's all just words. Words, 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 words. You know, like the Constitution, words, the Declaration of Independence. You know, words. We the people. Those are words, believe it or not. Oh, and by the way, Jesus was just a guy walking around saying a hell of a lot of words that somebody wrote down. So I thought to myself, what if he's just words? What if that's it? What if all Barack Obama is Michael Douglas at the end of an American president? What if he just walks out and makes us feel something for a change? Makes us think, hey, maybe we can be better than we were. And maybe he threw it all out there. He said, hey, abortion, okay, we're not all going to agree. <laughs> I don't know why men even discuss it. If you don't have ovaries, you don't get a choice. Uh, but whatever. <laughs> men could have abortion. It'd be drive through uh, so, but he laid it out there. He said, hey, we can at least agree to try to, you know, decrease unwed pregnancies, right? Yes, or just unwanted pregnancies, unwed, unwanted, whatever. Uh, then he said the gay thing, and he copped out on it. They always do. He said, you know, we can't all agree on gay marriage. I can, Barack. <laughs> so can the California State Supreme Court, the legislature in Massachusetts, and several other enlightened places. And you as a constitutional scholar know that. But anyway, 
Uh, at least he said we don't need to be discriminated against. And he said gay and lesbian, and Hillary said gay and lesbian, and Chad Kennedy said gay and lesbian, and bravo, gays and lesbians, front stage of the Democrats, bravo. Hey, Melissa Etheridge even sang. They had a dyke. Oh, it was day two, and there wasn't, you know, 75,000 people there, but still, a lesbian. Um, so, he was inspirational. And right now, don't we need some inspiration? You know, we do. We are, in 9-11, just like, bam! You know, just hit, just bam, just hit us. And then George Bush and his neoconservative criminals that he called an administration, which why Nancy Pelosi has, hasn't impeached them, is a whole other story. Uh, well, nothing's happened. And so we've lost hope. Gas soared, you know, at the people getting thrown out of their houses. I don't have to tell you all, if you're watching YouTube, you're too broke to be someplace else. So, you know, the fact of the matter is, we're all hurting one paycheck away from something. And he spoke to us tonight. And he said, I'm not going to promise you more of the same. That's insanity. Einstein said it. I'm going to tell you you can be better. And here's what got my vote. He told me I had to do it. He told me you had to do it. He said, government can't change you. Government can't change what's going on in the world. You have to do that. We have an energy crisis. Why isn't your house solar? Baby, the lights that you see, solar energy. Why not? Why aren't you? Why not? It's up to us to change. We should have changed in 2004 and kicked the bastard out. We didn't. Well, we better change now, because if we don't, we'll be learning Chinese. And he said it just like everybody else. We're borrowing money from China to pay the Saudis. This is real. He reminded me of that tonight. So on November 5th, he gets my vote. Not because I have to, but because I want to. Thanks, Barack. It was great.